have different dialects, but they have one language. In heaven, when they'll say hallelujah, even the, the, the angels in heaven, they're saying hallelujah. It's one language, one dialect. So we are saying the highest praise is to you, O Lord. The highest praise is to you, Lord. Hallelujah. From the beginning that you let us wake up, Lord, it's all already open. Our hearts is already open to be for your seeds to be planted. That our mind is already open. That all all the things in our are landed in our mind is uh, removed, O oh Lord. But we are only uh, ready. That all the words that you have given us will be heard by our spiritual ears, O oh Lord, and our heart will believe, O oh God. Thank you, for, Lord, for everything that you have done for each one of us. And that's all what we can say because we know that from glory to glory, you're changing us. And the hope that you have given us is the hope of glory, who is the Lord Jesus Christ. And you're always with us, Lord. 
So today, Lord God, we entrust to you everything. We entrusted you our life. We entrusted to you our work. We entrusted to you our property. And we plead the blood of Jesus over all this, O Lord God. The ultimate, you are the ultimate, O Lord, that no weapon formed against us shall prosper. Even the plans of the enemy, the wicked plans of the enemy, will never prosper to steal, kill, and destroy over our life, over our family, over our colleague, over our work, over our uh, uh, colleagues, and all our friends, Lord God. Thank you, Lord God, for we know that as we believe, all our family are saved, O Lord God. We give you praise, we give you honor, in the mighty name of Jesus we pray. Amen. Good afternoon. How are you? How are you, Sister Aruj? Sister, what is your name at the back? It's your first time, right? What is your name? Jane. Sister Jane, we welcome you. We are you together with? Who invited? Hi. <laughs> I need to come here in the side. Okay. As you started, they are still writing. So later, we will just call you to welcome you. So just uh, sit down, relax, and listen to the word God that God has prepared for us. So we welcome everyone. I'm so happy to have to, to see you. Beautiful faces. New faces. You know, despite that we know that we are having difficulties in life. Everyone I know have difficulties in life. But when we enter into the presence of the Lord, you know, it's very light. You are finding um, parang pausa ka, no? that you are finding rest into His presence. So once again, we welcome you in Only by Grace Ministries International. So today, we are in the book of Matthew. Ah, sorry, Thessalonians. And I was so blessed last, um, you know, pakiayos nga pa ng microphone, maugong. I'm so blessed in the, our Bible study in Rashidiya. By the way, if you would like, if you are near Rashidiya, we have a Bible study in Rashidiya. In, um, uh, ano pong villa yun? Villa 19. 90. So, from metro station, you will write letter F 606 and you will go down on the sixth stop. So, don't forget. Letter F6. So you, if you're near to that place, you can just ride that bus F06 and 6 stop. So it will be, it's always every Wednesday at 8.30 p.m. So uh, we welcome you in Rashidia uh, Bible study. We also have one Bible study in Villa 17. Dera, no, Pastor? Dera. Dera. It's near where? It's there. <laughs> so if you if you'd like, it's just in the in there near fish roundabout. So brother Ram, you can contact Sister Jalo and Brother Ram if you'd like to attend a Dera Bible study. It's near Fish Roundabout. So if you're just near there. Um there's also a Bible study where by Al Kale Gate. Al Kale Gate. Uh, community. So we if you are near or you have friends in Alkal Gate. Please connect them to us, and we are so ha we will be happy to you know welcome them. So if you'd like to open your house or your villa or your flat for a Bible study, just let us know, and we will schedule a regular Bible study in your place. You don't need to, though they are preparing for food. We thank you for preparing, but you don't need to prepare. If you don't have, we will bring. <laughs> you know, <laughs> praise the Lord. So we are in the book of Thessalonians. And last, as I have said in um, last Wednesday in Rashidia, we uh, learned on the, about the word in the word of God in the book of Thessalonians 1. Where, and in our discipleship, every Thursday, taas ang kamay, please raise your hand, those my classmates in discipleship. My classmates, raise your hand. Okay, so last week we have in Ephesians one nga po, no? Ephesians one. So from there we uh, learn about what is the purpose of our calling. And right now I'm so happy because First Thessalonians Bible study and Ephesians one, uh, 
uh, is connected to our uh, word for today, which is also in Philippians, um, it, it, uh, Thessalonians, First Thessalonians. So, I'd just like to give a brief background. So, uh, the letter of Thessalonians is written by? By Paul, Apostle Paul. And um, it is, he wrote it together with, when the, when the pres, in the presence of Timothy and Sila, Silabus, they called it also Silas. So, it's, you can find it in 1 Thessalonians 1. Uh, who is with him during the time that he wrote it. And, you know, um, he wrote it because he received a good report to the Thessalonians, uh, church in Thessalonians. By the way, during the time, the Thessalonians is a very young church. Is a church it is a church established by Paul during the time. But, you know, if you're an apostle, you're not staying in, in one place like a pastor that you're pastoring for five years, ten years, two years, or, or more. But as an apostle, you are uh, building a church in one place, learning them, uh, letting them learn, disciple them, teaching them the way of the Lord, teaching them the word of God, teaching them what Jesus has done for them, and be like, same as, you know, as Paul, imitating Christ. So, he... he um, uh, write to Thessalonians because, you know, uh, he actually is worried about them because they are young. That they may be, um, you know, be in other way. Because if you are a young Christian, who is uh, one year old here as a Christian? Please, uh, as a believer, not really a born Christian or Catholic or, you know, as a believer of Christ. Who is one year old? No one. Two years old. Three years old. Can you raise your hand? Four years old believer. Five years old. Oh my. Thank you, Lord. Walang nagtataas ng kamay. No one is raising your hand. Uh, seven. Eight believers. Eight years old. Sister Jalu. And Brother Ayo. Nine. Nine years old. Ten. Eleven. Twelve. Fifteen above. I will raise my hand. <laughs> I am. Um, I believe I received Christ since I was 12. So if I'm 30, uh, 43 now, I am 31 years old in the Lord. Praise God. So, um, but these Thessalonians, they are young. And the, the uh, apostle he did not stay there for a long time. But he had the time to, to teach them how to love. And you know, one of the good reports that he received is they... Um, Work in faith. So they have faith and they work it out. They labor in love. They, are, they have love. And, you know, they're not just saying, I love you, Brother Ayo. What, I, th what they're doing is more like they are serving Brother Ayo. You know, they're expressing that they have a labor of love. You know, and one, what else? So good report of they are steadfast in hope. They are patiently waiting they are patiently waiting for the hope. What is that hope? That Christ will come again. So th those are the good report, but that you can find in chapter 1 of First Thessalonians. But in chapter 3 of Thessalonians, you will see that he sent Timothy because he's worried. You are a, a very young, um, very young uh, believers. So he's worried that they will be go going to another place uh, they are not doing what he instructed to do, to walk according to their calling. So, um, in, and when Timothy returned back, you know, he sent Timothy, what happened? Because during the time, Paul is in Athens. And when Timothy returned back, he received a good report from Timothy. That whatever the instructions that Paul or the apostle is have teach them or taught them they are really doing he says they are they they are doing their love but in in fourth uh, fourth chapter they says do more exceed more so if you are um five years or not young anymore as a believer and you're still 
uh, you are there. You're loving us. No, you love each. We love each other. But you're still there, sitting down. If you are the Thessalonians and you're not working for the Lord to serve the Lord to give glory to the Lord, and you are at example, you are at Thessalonians. Paul says, do more, love more, exceed your love, exceed your work to the Lord, exceed your labor. So I'm, I'm, I'm so encouraged in the, you know, actually the Thessalonians is, the book of First Thessalonians is the call of Paul to the believers of Thessalonians for sanctification. Because when, you know, when, when you believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, you will not just remain as a child. You have, we have to grow and mature in the Lord. That's why he is saying, I receive a good report that you labor in love, that you work in faith, that you're steadfast in your hope in the coming of the Lord, but exceed more. So if we, if you think you're not yet, Lord, I want more. That should be the, our, our I know, that um, desire to the Lord. Lord, I want more. I want to love more. I want to work more. I don't like just to sit down and just greet my brothers and sisters beside me. Stand up and greet the, the sisters in the front or in the back. Move. Exceed more in love. So do do what um, uh, what is an. Um, uh, not for children anymore. Do as a mature believers of Christ. Though we don't have um, position, you don't have yet because the Lord is positioning us uh, from glory to glory in the Lord. Engage in the fellowship. Always come on time. By the way, the, the fellowship starts at four. So maybe you come that it's starting already. It is the Lord that whom we serve. So if you're late, do it more. I will come, Lord, on time next week because I don't want to be late. You exceed more on what you are doing for the Lord. That is for the Lord. Okay? Amen? Amen. Praise the Lord. Ano si Lola? Nanermon si Lola. Okay. So our topic for today is from 1 Thessalonians 5.24. So above all those um, good report that uh, Paul have received from Timothy, actually he says he, that the, um, the report is, you became my, the, you imitate me, you, that is Paul, and you imitate Christ. And as they do their work, uh, says the church in Macedonia imitate you. And when they heard, and not only the Macedonians, also the other church or other believers who hear about your good, about the good report to you, they imitate you as a church. So you know, uh, and then at the last, I was um, reading the uh, the book of Thessalonians. I went to this part of uh, it says here, "He who calls you is faithful." who also will do it. Now, you know, in, um, in my class in hermeneutics, one of the, the first thing that I have learned, you know, and I'd like to apply it right now, in the, in my, uh, as I study the hermeneutics, uh, is to observe. So when you read the Bible, when you read a passage or a verse, you just don't uh, translate it spiritually right away. You have to observe what is there. So my teacher says, observe what is there. What can you see there in that verse? What is there? So I wrote it very small. This is my observation. So let's have some observation on this passage. So again, the passage is, He who calls you is faithful, who also will do it. So, he is a noun. It's a main. So, this is how my teacher teach me how to observe. Okay? So, I'm just telling you that this is how I, I learn it. So, he is a noun. It's a main subject. So, he is the, the main. So, we're talking about all of this is about he. And, who, uh, and then, uh, who is a relative pronoun. Pronoun is a, <laughs> pronoun is, um, a replacement or to a noun. Uh, or it is a relative, so meaning it is connected to the noun. And 
calls is an adverb. It's an action word. So meaning, this he is doing something and that is to call. Okay? And what else? You. You is a pronoun. He is not the main subject, but he is the main subject. Is is a linking verb. It's an action word. So meaning, uh, it's only two-letter two word, but it's an action word. Yes, it is a linking verb. And faithful is an adjective. It describes either the noun or a pronoun. So it describes at this time, faithful describes the word he. Understood? So it's saying that he, linking word, is faithful. Understood? <laughs> That's how I learned it. And then who? Again, so it is, the, my teacher says, very important to always uh, think, see there's a two word that was repeated. Or how many, there are words that are repeated. And this is who. So who again is a pronoun. And also is a conjunction. It links uh, 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 words, phrase, or sentence. Also, and will do is an action word. But my question is, is it a past tense or a present tense? Or a future tense? So it is a future tense. And it, it is a, what is it? It is there. Pronoun. Because sometimes it can be a noun. Uh, depends on the sentence. So it is a pronoun. So, then after you check on this one, you can raise some questions. And I wrote it there. That in this passage, there are two characters. So, you need to observe what is there in the word. You will not just, I want to read the whole chapter and then finish. You need to observe. So, what is in that passage? There are two characters. And who are they? He and you. So, now my question is, who is he? And who is you? And... Um, who, or who is he who was called, who is called faithful? And then, what is the meaning of the word call in this verse? Is it like, I will call you Sister Grace Lynn later. Is it same as that call? Or it is a call like, it is, I graduated as a lawyer. It is my vocation, now it's my calling. Is it the same? So what is that meaning of the call in this passage? And then, how are you going to know that he who calls is faithful? How? And then, question that the conjunction also, was it referring to uh, the conjunction also? What is it referring to? What is the meaning of also in this passage? And then, what is that that he will do? What is that that he will do? So, you, we will not just like uh, get one and one and believe that is it. What it, the, 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 the word of God is saying here. So, the other teacher is saying, always do three. The, the three important in, in learning the word of God is one, context. Context, context. So, always you do as, uh, as you read and, 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 and study the word of God is always come back to the context of what is written, what is the location, so something like that. So, next is, will do. The word will do. So, my question earlier, is it a future tense? Is it a past tense? And so, the answer, you answered it, it's a future tense. Is there anything to do with the word call? Or it's a different thing that he is referring to? Is it the, the calling that he will do or it's different message? And what is it, the word it, that he will do as mentioned in the passage? What is that it? Is it related to the call or is it related to the that he will do? So what is that it? So meaning um, there are many things to, to, ans uh, to ask in our mind, not just that, ah, he is faithful so uh, he will give me job, he will do it. So it's a wrong context. You are not applying it the same way. 
Because you have to read the whole passage of the Bible in, in, in the whole Thessalonians to be able to understand this one verse have many things to explain. Okay? So, but first of all, I believe that I cannot finish it <laughs> because it's a long, it's a small passage, but what it is, he who calls you is faithful, who um, also will do it means or what is the context of it. I will just give a few. So right now, he who calls, he and you, he, you can find in 1 Thessalonians 5.24, he is referring to God. Now, may the God of peace himself sanctify you completely. So he, the word he, though it is a big letter, we know it already that it's God, but we uh, support it. With the word that he, if you will read it on the verse before it, it says, Now may the God of peace himself sanctify you completely. So he refers to God. Now, it says here that you, it is translated in Greek as see. It's a singular because sometimes I will just say you, but I refer as a plural. Plural. But in this verse, you will see in the Greek word that as you as if you will study that it is a singular word, and meaning. But in, in the phrase uh, or the verse after it, it says, "I charge you by the Lord that this epistle, this letter, will be read to all the holy brethren." So meaning there are many, but if you will see in Greek, it is a singular. So meaning there's a relationship between this he and you. It's a personal information between me and you, not as a congregation, no. So meaning this word is for individual, and that is for me, and that is for you. Okay, you, you, you get it? So as we, we, under, we, be, um, we uh, study, it's, it is sometime, something like this. So now, a call, as I have said earlier, he who calls is a verb. It's an action word. It's translated in Greek as kaleo. Okay? In biblical, kale, in, there are many, many meanings of kaleo in biblical usage. It is, one, to call. To call aloud. Utter in a loud voice. Be to invite, invitation, the divine invitation to embrace salvation of God. So this is one meaning of call in the Bible. Second, to call, to name by name. I will call you Abraham. Instead of Abraham, Abraham. In several, Sarai, I call you Sarah. So um, to name or to call by name. To give a name, to receive the name of, receive as a name. To give some name to one, call his name. To be called, to bear name or a title. That is also a meaning of call. When I call you to bear a name or a title. Among men, another is to salute one by name. So that is the biblical usage that you will see in the word kaleo. Because the call in the Bible there are many translation depends on how of in Greek depends on how you use it but in this passage it was kaleo okay can you say kaleo, kaleo. so ka, kaleo <laughs> like that ka, something like that so that is how you pronounce it so uh, so that's a call so he who calls you so there are many meaning of this call. Which one is this in this call? But context, context, context. So you will remember the context. Now, um, these are the callings of the Lord. Okay? Um, but as today, I think I can only manage to uh, share the number one. We are called unto salvation. We are called to be saved. We are called for justification. Because the second, it's um, uh, on the next, maybe another uh, opportunity to preach or to, to share the word of God. We'll talk about 
our calling to sanctification. Our call, we are called to holiness. Okay? So, three, we are called into God's glory to glo for glorification. So, for today, let's talk about one calling because it's a big uh, word. God, He who calls you unto salvation. Let's just uh, change that for now. Unto salvation is faithful. Okay? So, um, so remember what is uh, our calling? Call to justi for justification, sanctification, and glorification. So right now, today, we'll talk about the calling number one. If you will remember the meaning of call, in letter B, under it, there's a divine invitation to embrace salvation of God. Okay? So that is our call. It's a, He invited us. To, to divine, it's a divine invitation to embrace, to, you know, uh, accept the invitation of salvation. Now, He calls you unto salvation or calls you to be saved or to be justified. What is justification? So later on, we will continue. Um, in verse John 5.25, it says, Most assuredly, I say to you, the hour is coming, and now is, when dead will hear the voice of God, and those who hear will live. The hour is now. The Bible says the hour is now. Okay? Are we clear with that now? We're talking about now, the present. When the dead will hear, how come dead can hear. Is that those who, who are in funeral or in the cemetery can hear? So meaning context, 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 it's not the meaning of the body, the, those deaf, dead people. The dead, what is the meaning of that? That those who are, you know, um, sp spiritually deaf, deaf, oh, oh, bingi. <laughs> Yung hindi makarinig, those who cannot hear spiritually because of their condition. Later on, we'll talk about condition. So, he said, when the dead will hear the voice of the Son of God. I don't know if this is your first time to hear about Jesus. But I am, the Lord is um, uh, saying that those who are spiritually, that they cannot hear God, not because they don't have relationship with God. When the dead will hear the voice of the Son of God, and those who will hear will live. That is the promise. But I believe that we are all believers or Christians, right? Okay, so we are not part of the dead people. We once, bec we once, we are once like that. I am once like that. I am dead. In my trespasses, I am dead. Uh, uh, on my spirit, spirit, but when I hear the word of God, He says He will live. That is why um, we are inviting you. That if there's any opportunity, you come to our um, evangelism. It's just still hot outside, so that's why we uh, stop for a while. But when we do our evangelism, or when you someone is beside you in the metro station, and the Lord will tell you. Um, uh, share, but you are like afraid of how you will do it. Don't stop. Just share the love of God. Share. If the Lord will ask you to share to that people, because that's it, the, the time is now when the dead will hear the voice of God. They will be alive. Maybe that is the time that God will use you for that man to be alive. Now, it says there, in Romans 3.23, this is our condition before. All have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Sa Tagalog, walang nakaabot, lahat ay nagkasala at walang nakaabot sa pamantayan ng Diyos. In English, all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. God has His own standard. Uh, God has His own standard. You know, but it says, no one, because of the sin of man, no one got to that standard. Because God is holy, 
No one is holy or will become holy if he is a sinner. So that is the condition of men during the time that they are dead. So those who are dead, this is the condition. Now, in 1 Corinthians 1.9, it says, God is faithful by whom you were called into the fellowship of His Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. So when the time that we know Christ, that we believe to the Jesus Christ, that He is the Son of God, we, our position will change. Our position, we will have relationship to Jesus. That's why in the Facebook, no, I'm in a relationship. You're changing your status. It's not your condition, actually. It is your position. You have, it never changed anymore. Even there will be earthquake, even there will be tribulations, whatever it is, as long as you are in Christ, your position that you are in a relationship with Christ never change. Okay, so that is uh, your your God calls us to that point that we should have a relationship to Jesus. Okay, Amen. So in Ephesians two eight to nine, that is where our uh, the name of the church derived from. For by grace you have been saved through faith. And that not of yourself, it is the gift of God, not of works, lest anyone should boast. For the grace you have been saved. So we know that the grace of God is unmerited favor of God. You will not work for it. Mercy is different from grace. Mercy, if, if I, have a, I am in the jail and I was pardoned, I'm still not free. Because they are looking if I'm good outside. They will pardon me to go outside. They will look after my, uh, what I'm doing outside. So meaning, I'm not yet free from the, the sin that I have done. That's why I, was, I went to jail. But when you, that is called mercy. The pardon is mercy. But when we're talking about grace, gracey, gracely. When talking about grace, it's free. No standard that you need to do to be able to receive it. It is, gra it is grace, biyaya. And it says that uh, you have been saved through faith. What is this save? Save from the Greek word zodzo. Repeat after me, zodzo. zodzo. So that is the Greek word for save, pronounced as sodezo or zodzo. The biblical usage of Zodzo is to save, to keep safe and sound, to rescue from danger or destruction, one from injury or peril or be perish, to save suffering, one from perishing, one suffering from disease, to make well. Heal, restore to health, to preserve one who is in danger of destruction, to save or rescue. Save means to save in technical biblical sense negatively, to deliver from the penalties of the messianic judgment or uh, messianic judgment, to save from the evils which obstruct the reception of the messianic deliver, deliverance. So, save from the evils. Save from the work of the enemy. So, that is um, some of, or that is the biblical usage of the word sodzo in this save. So, if you will see, save from suffering. He saves us from disease. It, he makes us well. That is one of the meaning of save. He restores our health. So if you are in the position right now that you are experiencing diseases or infirmities in your body, it is included in the salvation that Jesus Christ has done on the cross. If you are um, in the, in, like in the, um, if you are um, in a position that you cannot live in that, uh, let's, let's just say, let me say an example. 
you are in a wrong relationship that you cannot go out from it. The Bible says He saved you from, from, the, from that part, but we have to do something. But not, that is not justification. That is sanctification. So, it is a salvation. He says, I will make you well. I bless you. So, that is all about part of Zodzo. So, I'll just uh, go back. So, he says, for by grace you have been saved. So, not only, um, first of all, is our spiritual salvation, our, our uh, soul from uh, eternal condemnation. But also, not only that, but saved from even uh, the, 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 um, what are, the physical he provided for us. So it's in general, it is a, um, what do you call this one? A full package. The, self, the save is not about after that, I will leave again. That is, that's also no. So that's, the, save, the save here is even in eternal or even you are on earth, the salvation of the Lord is there. You understood it? Amen. So, it says, said through faith, and even this faith, you say, Lord, I have done, you said grace is, uh, is unmerited, that I don't need to work for it, to receive it. But, isn't it that I will have faith to receive it? So, at least I have some contribution to my salvation. In justification, you don't have, so, uh, we don't have um, a portion to be saved. We don't have part to be saved. This faith is even not from us. The Bible says God gave us a measure of faith. And that faith is the faith of the Son of God. The faith that is the, the one that is imparted to us is even not our faith. Because if it's our faith, we always doubt. But this faith is the one that believes to the Son of God. And that not of yourself, it is a gift of God. So it's, the Bible says it is the gift of God. That faith, that grace... That salvation, it is the gift of God. Not of works, lest anyone can boast. You will not say, Lord, I have part. I am good, so that's why I am saved. I always go to church every week, so I am saved. I always pray, so I am saved. I always, uh, you know, when I was in the, in the old uh, belief, no? I, uh, from here to there, you will um, by me, walk by me. And so I was saved. No. It doesn't, no, nothing to do with wha, what we have done. It is, the Bible says, it is by His grace alone that we are saved. It's not even our faith. It is the faith of the Son of God. Now, in Romans 5.1, it's there. Therefore, having been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. By faith to the Lord Jesus Christ, we are justified. So meaning our salvation. In Tagalog, napawalang sala. Got it, Filipinos? So ang sabi, napawalang sala ka na. So you are not just pardoned. In English, justified. You are not just pardoned. Your sins was removed. Cleansed. So walang sala. He says you are not guilty anymore. And our position become, you know, it's changed. It become, we have, actually this is our condition in the Lord. We have reconciled with God through the work of the Lord Jesus Christ. So, in Romans 5, 5, 11, it says there, For while we were still helpless, at, at the point, Appointed moment. So God has appointed moment. It's not like God is so unfair that He allow. Example, you're older than me. That He allows Ate Joanna to be to be saved when he, she was old. Well, I I was saved when I was 35 years old. It's not that, but the Lord says He has an appointed moment. He has an appointed time, and the Lord is never late. Working in our life. He has a very purpose. Why we have a different time of encounter to the Lord. So, while, but what we have, 
we have that different time of encounter, but we have uh, same condition. So it's still not it's still not um, uh, unfair. We have the same com condition, and what is that? While where we are still helpless, when we cannot do anything, Christ died for the ungodly. So not only for the believers, for all the people, he died for the ungodly. It says, when, while we were still helpless, Christ died for the ungodly. For rarely will someone die for just, for just, a, uh, just people, though for a good person, perhaps someone might even dare to die. So if it says here that no one or... Maybe you could find, but no one will give his life to all the people to be saved. Even, even sometimes he is my friend, and we are in the position that, yeah, you know, life and death. Am I going to give my life for him? He is my friend. Maybe you can find few, but not all. But in this time, it is who G Jesus Christ is the one who do this for us. In it, but God proves his own love. When? When we are loving? When we, you know, when uh, I am good? Did he prove his love for me when Gracie is good? No. Grace Lynn pala. Gracie ako ng Gracie. So, um, he says here, while we are still sinners. While, in, if you could remember in Romans 3, it says, uh, while we are not coming to the standard of God. When we are still not acceptable to God, God loves us. God proves His love. Uh, and Christ died for us. That is how He proved. Christ died for us. Christ, he gave His only Son for us. And He did not stop that moment that He can do it. He is God. He can just say, okay, all people perish. This is my son. I don't like my son, Jesus Christ, to die. No, he did not stop that moment because he, he, all of us is in his mind at that moment that if we will, if Jesus will not do it, if he will not say it is finished, we are all, we will all perish. No life will remain alive. No living will, will remain alive. Much more than since we have now been declared righteous. So now who is righteous? Can you raise your hand? The Bible says we are now declared righteous. It means, ano bang righteous? Matuwid. I'm still sinning. Why they are calling me righteous? We are called righteous, says the Bible. And that is not because of your righteousness or my righteousness. That is the righteousness of the Son of God. That is imputed to us. That is given to us. So, for, well, it says here, since we have now been declared righteous, now, it's a present tense, by His blood, that is the, that is the means, by His blood we, we became or we have been called righteous. We will be saved through Him. Huh? We will be saved. You, Sister Giovanna, you said we are saved. Then why we will be saved? Context, context, context. So now it says here, we will be saved through Him from wrath. So you says in the Bible, he, he says, for by grace you have been saved. Past tense. Now you says you will be saved from wrath. Why there's different uh, teaching on this? No, they are not different. You need just to come back. What is the meaning of save? Is this a, a, a spiritual save from spiritual death, or it is save from physical death? So there is a context. Now we will be saved because we are called righteous. The wrath of God will be poured out at the end of age. There will be tribulations. There will be fa famine. From that wrath of God, from the judgment of God, we will be saved because the word of God says we are righteous. Amen? Amen. So, when you say 
For by grace you have been saved. That is the position of your, of your soul. That you are already saved. You are already justified. You are already, sanct uh, uh, you are already um, forgiven. Now, this we will be saved is different from that saved word in Romans 3. Uh, no, Ephesians 2. It is says here that you will be saved because of the righteous because now you are declared righteous by his blood you will be saved from that wrath that is coming when God will pour out his wrath you are saved you will be saved you will not be included for if while we were enemies we were reconciled to God through the death of his son so Bible says, even you are not loving, even you are a sinner, God made a way to reconcile us to God for us to not experience that wrath. Then how much more? Having been reconciled, now we are reconciled, will be saved by His life. It's talking about uh, not the spiritual death. We'll be saved. It's talking about an eternal life. By His life, because of the life of Jesus Christ, we experience eternal life. Okay? And now only that, and not only that, but we also rejoice in God through our Lord Jesus Christ. We have now received this reconciliation through Him. No other ways. The Bible says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father. No one will reconcile to the Father except through me. And, and that, is, that is why we're singing, um, this is my worship. Hallelujah. You are worthy to be praised. That is why we, worship, we sing that song. Because God is the only, Jesus Christ is the only way why we are reconciled to God, why we are forgiven, why we will not experience that wrath that is coming. Now, in, in the next verse here in Colossians 2, you were dead because of your sins. That is our previous position. Because your sinful nature was not yet cut off. Then God made you alive with Christ. I am crucified with Christ. I no longer live, but Christ lives in me. But the, and, the, and the life that I, now I live in the flesh is the life of the, of, the, of the Son of God. So, for He forgave all our sins. He canceled the record of the charges against us and took it away by nailing it to the cross. Even Satan always petitioned on the court of heaven. He is, sin he is a sinner. He is, he's not, he, he is not worthy of your forgiveness. He, even he will, um, he will uh, petition there day and night. The Bible says he petitioned day and night for us to say, uh, Brother Samuel is, should not be saved. He is a sinner. He, just recently, he did, he did something wrong. The Bible says, For he forgave all your sins. Past, present, and future. He canceled the records of the churches against us and took it away by nailing it on the cross. 2,000 years ago, your sin right now, He nailed it on the cross for our forgiveness. Now, I have a question. If God has forgiven us, forgave all our sins, and just recently, I have sinned. Why I need to ask God, forgive me. He already forgiven us. Bible says He forgive us. Then why are we always, when we ask for prayer, we always say, forgive me, Lord, I have sinned. Why we always ask for forgiveness if He already forgiven us? Did you ask that question also? Because I asked that question also. Now, it does nothing to do with our position in the Lord. When we are in the Lord, when we receive Jesus Christ as our personal Lord and Savior, now we are in a relationship. Okay? And, this, and our fa His Father in heaven become our Father in heaven. That is our position. That, that sinful nature that He nailed on that cross is that sinful nature. And He has forgiven us past, present, future, the curse of that sin until the end of our life, He have forgiven us. But why we always 
when we always pray, Lord, forgive us. We have done this. We have done this. It is um, because of our condition, not our position. When he says, you are my son, he will always be, you will always be my son. So meaning, uh, if pastor is my son, pastor Jackster is my son, it will not change. Whether he will go uh, his way, whether he sinned, he will be my son. Even he go to Philippines, he will always be my son. But the condition of every day we're sinning, it's our condition. Like if if he, I'm a mother, not a father. If if uh, I am his mother, and he sinned because he did he he do this, which is in not in line with what I wanted or not in my will, or he uh, what you call this one. Sinira niyang aking pangalan. Uh, I'm medalya and he is medalya example. And he put something wrong. He put that, anong sinira ang pangalan? Um, ruwe, um, pu- blotted, or my, something on my name. He have done something, uh, the, something wrong. Uh, stain. Um, his condi- he will say, our, our, our condition, like, you will not be like um, we will fight. We will not be close, no, Pastor. If you have done something wrong to me, we will not be close. No fellowship. But my position, as he is my son and I am his mother, same. It never changed. So only when he asks for forgiveness, Mother, forgive me. I acknowledge that I have wrong. That condition is not the condition of the father to his son. He remains my son. But that condition will be for him so he will not feel guilt that when I come to the Father, to, to the Father in heaven, he will not, you know, when we have sinned, no, we, you, it's like, uh, I don't like to come to the Father, I have sinned. It's like, it's, I feel that he's very far to me. No, he remains where he is. He's waiting for us like a prodigal son to just run away, you know, when he sees us. It is our condition that is matter. So that's why we are asking for forgiveness for our condition so we can come to the Lord freely. So that's why it is different from here that when, when it says, for he forgave all our sins, it's different from every day that we are asking for forgiveness. This is something to do with our position in the Lord. But our everyday life is, our condi- is about our condition in our relationship to the Lord. If, if example, Gladys is my friend, my close friend, and I uh, do something wrong to her, we are still remain friend. But without saying, Gladys, I'm sorry, I have done this, that relationship will not reconcile as close as before. So that's why we ask every day, Lord, forgive me. I want you. I want to know you more. Forgive me. I want to, be, to know uh, what you like me to do. What is your will for my life? What is your plan for my life? Forgive me. Because this sin that I'm all continuously doing hinders me to know what is your will for my life. Now, we have to do something. To, uh, to, we have to do something to, do, to, to be reconciled. And it is not, and it is in Romans 10, 9 to 10. If you declare with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. And that is so so. Meaning you will feel you will be well. You will be delivered from anything, the curses. You will be healed. You will have eternal life. If you will, for it is with your heart that you believe and are justified. And it is with your mouth that, you're, that you profess your faith and are saved. It says in, I just repeat it. So we have to declare, Lord, I want to have a relationship with you. I want to be your son, oh God, I want, or daughter, oh God, I want to be 
your best friend. You ha- to enter into this relationship, we have to accept Jesus Christ. It's the only way. And in 2 Corinthians 6, 2, actually in verse, in chap- in, uh, verse 1, there's a word, not receive the grace of God in vain. Don't just make the grace of God like less value. Our condition will change, but His grace never changed. The weight of His grace never changed. You know, it's, the Bible says, do not receive the grace of God in vain. In, in verse 2, he says, for He says, in an acceptable, acceptable time, I have heard you. Every time you call, I have heard you. And in the day of salvation, I have helped you. Behold, now is the acceptable time. I'm talking, the Lord is talking to your heart right now. Now is the time. Now is the acceptable time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. So if we don't have yet the relationship with Jesus, now is the day of salvation. No other day. Because now is the day that you heard it. The invitation of, the God, of God. The call of God. And I'd like to encourage you with this. Let, let's go back to that verse. I'm just in the first line. I'm not yet finished on the second line. Who also will do it? I just focus yet. Next time we'll talk about it. But now he says, He who calls you is faithful. He is faithful. Faithful in this passage or this verse translated in Greek as pistos. And I'd like to encourage you with this, that God is faithful. God is faithful because it is His holy character and being. Whatever we're doing in our life, He never changed. He will always be faithful because he is, it is His being. It is His character. It is who He is. He is faithful. He is reliable. He is committed. He is firm. He is stable. He is trustworthy. He is the same. God, yesterday, today, and forever. God is faithful to His words. Whatever is written on His word in, his bo- in, the, in the Bible, He is faithful to fulfill it in you. No, no favoritism. He is faithful to my life. He is faithful to pastor's life. He is faithful to brother Cheryl's life. He is faithful to sister Phyllis Zaid's life. Aida. Phyllis Zaida. God is faithful in His salvation design. He's designed the way you will be saved. And that is through the Lord Jesus Christ to die on the cross. It was planned for us to be saved. He is faithful that, to that design of salvation. God is faithful to His divine plan. For your plan up to eternity, He from now to eternity, He is faithful to do it. And God is faithful in His love towards us. He will never change. He is faithful. So now, I, I, I pray that when you go out, you remember, if you don't memorize a verse, remember this verse, 1 Thessalonians 5.24. He who calls you is faithful. Next time, we'll talk about who also will do it. Remember it. He is faithful. Praise the Lord. Let's pray. Paul said to Timothy, Our God cannot uh, deny himself. If you are faithless, he will remain faithful. Amen. Amen. And those who believe in the Son of God, to those who believe in Jesus Christ as the Son of God, he will be faithful to you. And God will spare us in his coming. And this is our hope. Amen. Amen. The Conjuana said earlier. The very time 
God saved us, God elevated our position to a heavenly uh, position. We are secured by the grace of God. But every day we commit sin. It is clear as what we have heard earlier that our condition is affected. Every time we sin, our condition is affected. Every time we sin, we are ashamed to fellowship. Sorry. Sometimes if you committed mistakes to your brethren, you don't want to, you know, you don't want to come to church. You don't want to fellowship. You don't want to join the fellowship. You don't want to join the worship, the corporate worship, because you have committed sin against him or against her. You know, things like that. And that is why it's very important for us to, you know, to, to understand the scripture. And thank you, Deacon Joanna, for teaching us how to, um, you know, how to observe, uh, how to um, observe context. In, um, in Bible school, they call this one as inductive study Bible. You know, they get, they, they get, uh, evidence and then come up with the idea that is close to the context for some who are not studying opening their Bible most of the time they first make their assumption deduce it and make their conclusion make their opinion amen so in, we encourage everyone every um, every Thursday we have um inductive um, Bible study here and you will, you will be encouraged to read uh, the Bible, understand it the way God wants us to understand it you know if you have a father a good father because our father is a good good father if you experience a good father you will realize how our father longs to have intimacy with his children you know, earlier in Ras al Kaima, I told them concerning brokenness. There are times we are broken for the wrong reason or because of doing the wrong decision. And there, there are also times that we are broken for the right purpose. You know, if, if you have a good father, every time you, we commit mistakes, the rod is ready. Hello, how many of you have a good father? Experience the rod. Or good mother, experience the belt. Good, no? They're good. They don't want us to grow up abusive. They don't want to grow us uh, misusing our freedom. They don't want us to grow, um, go there, go there, go, where, go everywhere. They want us to have a straight path. And you know, our good parents, when you know them, every time they are pleased, you will be rewarded too. And this is the thing why God wants us to know Him. And in, the, in this very passage, second, uh, 1 Thessalonians 5, God is, has made us an assurance. He is faithful. That when the wrath of God comes, you will be spared. Amen. As a church. Amen. Amen. In our discipleship, we learn that the age of the church is from the time of Pentecost and until the day of wrath. say the caught up or they said rapture that's the church age okay and so this is the promise of God to the church we will be spared from that day and this is a good news for everyone who believes in Jesus Christ as the son of God your trust in the Lord will never be in vain amen, amen? 
And that is why we hope in the Lord. This is a good thing. This is a good defense of our faith. You know why? Because He is coming. He is coming back. It may not be tomorrow. It may not be next week. Or even, you know, later. Or we, we, got, uh, we go first before He's coming. But one thing is for sure. He is coming back. Amen. So keep trusting God. Through His Son, Jesus Christ. He is coming back. And this is the conclusion of Paul. Why we are reading it. While we are waiting. Of His coming back. While people are praying for Maranatha, come Lord, come quickly. Paul is saying, church, live a righteous life. Live a godly life. Since your hope in, is in the Lord, live a godly life. Live a life that is pleasing to Him. Because He is coming back. And you know, to those who live upright before God, we are, not, we are not setting aside that we will commit mistakes. But if you will read the book of Revelations, there will be rewards. Even in the time of Jesus Christ, He already told the, the audience, His listeners, that, you know, some of you will have their own mansions. Some of you in Revelation will rule nations. Some of you will rule cities. If you will read the seven churches, some of you will be like that. There will be reward. In God's eyes, we are all equal. But during or after the judgment seat of Christ, maybe you will get 90% of your reward and me 20% of my reward. And that is why every time I stand here, I try to motivate you. Your labor in the Lord is not in vain in the Lord. You know, we experience it here in UAE. We're living in bed space. Imagine that. You like in, in eternity, we are also in bed space? No. No. And this is a good choice for you and for me. He is coming back. He is faithful Amen? He's coming back and He is faithful. Amen. The Bible says, we will be judged with our bad doings. We will be judged by our good doings. Everything will be weight in the judgment seat of Christ. We will never see the great white throne. It's only for the unbeliever. Those who don't accept the Lord Jesus Christ. Believe that He is the Son of God. Amen? God cannot deny Himself. First Timothy, if we are faithless, imagine that, if we are faithless, see, Paul is saying to Timothy, if we are faithless, He remains faithful. Imagine an apostle talking, if we are faithless, even Paul the apostle acknowledge it, there will be time, we will commit mistakes. If we are, because faith comes from hearing and hearing the word of God. That is the, uh, already in the condition. And I want you to join since the Conjuana mentioned it earlier. Come even sitting down this coming Thursday. We will have inductive study of the word faith. Just the word faith. How important it is for the church. Amen? So we will have a good defense for um, what we are today and why we believe it and who we are today. Amen? Praise God. Hallelujah. God is good. So we as believers, we as a church, we should live righteously in the light of the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen? Don't be afraid that He is coming. Rejoice that He is coming. Amen. You know, the rewarder is coming. Amen. Hello? Amen. The rewarder is coming. Amen? Amen. Amen. You know, if you live a righteous life here on earth, you will be excited. 
Amen? And if we are not doing, sometimes, Lord, extend your coming back. Extend your coming back. But He is coming back. Amen? Amen? And to those who are faithful, this is a promise. This is our hope. Our labor in the Lord is not in vain in the Lord. He will come back. And in His coming back, He will remain faithful. Amen? Let's all stand. Hallelujah. Anyone new? First time. First time. First time to come here. In the fellowship. Hallelujah. Good. First time to come here. Okay. So actually, we, we as a family, we as a church, you know, if you will see, we, are not, we will not be inviting you because you are new in the fellowship. We are inviting you in front because we want you to join us in the fellowship. Amen? I know, especially for people in, from Africa, because I, I, before, uh, you know, before, um, before Reinhard Bonke died, I was a good follower of Reinhard Bonke. So every time he's having um, his crusades, I enjoyed watching it. And so, every time I see uh, Reinhard Bonke in Africa, millions of Africans crying out before God. And so, every time I see um, an African, uh, I have the confidence that they are believers of the Lord Jesus Christ as the Son of God. But still, we will invite you because we want to not only to uh, um, affirm that you are one of us, but to be sure before God that, Lord, they came in the fellowship one time. We did our best. We, 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 we demonstrate faithfulness before you. And they had believed, they had confessed. We hear it with our own ears that they believed in you as the Son of God. Amen? So to those who are first time, can... Uh, can we invite you in front? Is that okay? Yeah. Hallelujah. So, I know you already prayed the Lord Jesus. Believe that He is the Son of God. But today, we will do it as a church welcoming you in the family. Amen? So with all humility before God, just close your eyes. Lift your hands as a sign of reverence. And together, let us pray before our Father who is in heaven through His Son, Jesus Christ. Let's open our mouth. Let's believe in our heart. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for your love, for your grace, and for your mercy. God, thank you for inviting me here. I know you used my friend for me to hear, for me to be reminded about your love, about your grace that is sufficient. God, I know I committed mistakes. And so, Lord, the, this evening, I humble myself and ask for forgiveness. Forgive me, Father, for all my sin, for all my mistakes. As your word declares, O oh God, if I confess my sin, you are faithful and just to forgive me and cleanse me from all unrighteousness. Thank you, God for your forgiveness. Right now, I release forgiveness to those people who have sinned against me. Forgive them, Father, for they do not know what they believe, or what, they, what they have done against me. Father, right now, I believe you sent your Son, Jesus Christ, here on earth, died on the cross for my sin. And so, Lord, tonight, I believe in Jesus, that He is the Son of God. I believe in Jesus, 
when he died on the cross, on the third day, he rose again. Father, thank you for writing my name in the book of life. Thank you, Father, for bestowing, for giving me the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, teach me, guide me to live according to what pleases God. Father, this I pray in the name of Jesus, my Savior, my Lord, my King. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. Amen. God is good. You know, just like uh, the Kunjuana earlier has uh, said, we, I'm not ashamed to, you know, asking for forgiveness every day before God. Because one thing, uh, benefit of asking for forgiveness is the privilege to be intimate with God. The privilege to be one with God. The privilege to be right with God. Amen. Church, let's just pray for our sisters. You all wearing red. Yeah. Touch of red mixed with white. The blood of Jesus is so powerful that even death cannot stand. The blood of Jesus is so powerful. Our past cannot hunt us. Amen. The blood of Jesus is so powerful that we have the best present in our life today. The blood of Jesus is so powerful that He has not only, um, you know, allowed, He allowed us to have hope in our future that all will be well. If you are suffering today because of faith in Jesus, do not worry. Your labor in the Lord is not in vain in the Lord. Amen. Father, we thank you, Lord. Father, we bless you. Thank you, Lord, for your daughters. Ears of Christ, ears in Christ Jesus. God, you know them. You know their name. You even number the hair, oh God. So, Lord, our confidence tonight, everything will be well with them. And so, Lord, tonight, we just pray, God, bless them in every area of their lives. Lord, we commit them into your hands. Lord, we declare in the name of Jesus, they will be salt and light in this world, oh God. Father, we declare in the name of Jesus, people around them will know you because of their life. Thank you, Lord, for your word that has promised us. Those who believe in Jesus will shine, Lord. They will become light in this world, oh God, in the name of Jesus. God, we just speak blessing to their families, to their loved ones, even in their workplace, oh God. Thank you, God. And Lord, we declare you will surround them with people who will pray for them. Surround them with people who will encourage them. Surround them with people who will strengthen them. Surround with people, oh God, that will always remind them God is good. And that helps them, oh God, to be grateful on a daily basis until you come, oh God. Thank you, Father. We cover them under the precious blood of Yeshua the Messiah that no works, plans of the wicked one shall prosper before them. But all the works of the enemy, they shall overcome, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for anointing them. In Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, sister. We are so...
tell the person next to you? You know, this is a mix up of uh, what we have in Ras Al Kema and what we have here. Brokenness from the wrong reason leads us to be disciplined. Brokenness for the right purpose leads us to be intimate with God. Amen. So you know it already. If you want a rod, you know what to do. Choose plan B, choose plan C, choose plan D. But if you want to be intimate with God, there's always a plan A through His Son, Jesus Christ, through the Holy Spirit, and through reading and studying the Word of God. All Scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, that the man of God may be thoroughly equipped and ready for every good work. Amen? Amen? Amen. There is there's always a plan B, but through His Son, Jesus Christ, He provided plan A. Amen? Amen. Praise God. Let's all rise, church, for the, our benediction. Father, we thank you, Lord, for this wonderful afternoon. Father, we thank you, Lord, for the life of our dear um, leader, O God, uh, Ati Joanna, Dikun Joanna, Lord. Continue to inspire her, Lord, with your word. Continue to inspire her, Lord, that she may teach more, Lord, the things you want us to learn, O God. That you desire intimacy, Lord, that you desire a good condition while we are alive today, Lord. Thank you, Father. Continue. We continue to pray, Lord. We speak more knowledge, O God, in Christ Jesus. More grace, Lord, in Christ Jesus. We speak, Lord, more understanding, Lord, in Christ Jesus. And more wisdom, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Protect her always, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. We bless your name, Lord, through her life, Lord, as a good testimony, Lord, here in this church. We bless you, God. Church, let's lift our hands. The God of patience and comfort grant us to be like-minded towards one another in believing in Christ Jesus, in believing in the Father, in allowing the Holy Spirit to minister to us through the Word of God. May the God of hope fill us with all joy that we may abound with joy by the power of the Holy Spirit. My dear brothers and sisters, regardless how small it is, how big it is, your labor in the Lord is not in vain in the Lord. So be strong, be courageous, be steadfast, be immovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that your labor in the Lord is not in vain in the Lord. Ultimately, my dear brothers and sisters, if there is one thing I want you to remember always, all the days of your life, in Christ, you are complete. You don't lack any good thing. So as we depart in this place, let us depart with the shalom of God. And all the days of our life, let us dwell in God's rest. The God of the Father, the, the love of the Father, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the fellowship, communion of the Holy Spirit, be with us all until He comes. Father, yours is the glory, yours is the honor, yours is the praise, because yours is the kingdom, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Shalom, shalom. Amen.